Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by Mr. Stano, your earth science teacher. And today we're going to go on to predicting the weather. The last few screen screencasts that we went over looked at a bunch of different weather variables. Now what we can do is take all those variables, put them together to try to predict the weather. Occasionally on the news, we'll see five day forecast, one week forecast, or some is even up to 10 day forecast as to weather. And what we need to know is, is how, how do they do this? How are they able to predict out three, four, or 10 days in advance? Do we rely on uh, creatures such as Puxatawney Phil, the groundhog, to say whether or not we're gonna have winter for another six weeks? There's a little rhyme that goes with that. Here's a little groundhog, furry and brown. He's coming up to look around. If he sees his shadow, down he goes, then six more weeks of winter snows. So February 2nd, we see Puxatawney Phil come up, along with a number of other local groundhogs. They all do this. Uh, within news, you'll see each area's got different ones. He just happens to be the most famous, but do we rely on him? Or do we look at pine cones? Or if cows are lying down, we know if bad weather is coming. These are a bunch of different uh, wise tales or uh, clues that we have about current and future weather conditions. I don't know, how well do they work? Or do we rely on weather satellites and balloons? These weather satellites and balloons can gather information up about, about our atmosphere to help us predict the weather. We have weather satellites that can be in fixed position around the Earth or geosynchronous out, out into space where they can get radar images of what's going on with the weather, such as cloud cover or precipitation. We can also use weather balloons these balloons are going to go up into our upper positions of the atmosphere, gathering data as they're going up, and then able to relay that information down back to us to help us make better predictions. These are weather stations around the world, and you can see there are a lot of weather stations. The more weather stations we have means the more data we can collect, which means that potentially we can make better forecasts about our weather. This is a radar image from weather, from weather satellites. And you can see on here how we have all these regions of cloud cover. And we're able to make and predict weather about this from this cloud cover. Here's some more satellite images that we can use to predict weather patterns. If we go down here, we could see some of these spiraling shapes and we know with these spiraling shapes, like around here, that those weather patterns, just like around here, are gonna move in very predictable ways, or somewhat predictable ways. That'll let us know if weather's gonna be coming in or, or towards our area. So what do we do with all this information? We're able to see if it's cloudy out, how the winds might be. What we're able to do is we put all that onto station models. Station models help us predict the weather. Each one of these down here, or actually all around, are station models. So if we look through, we could see them scattered all over the country. A lot of station models. If I were to spend, I could spend quite a bit of time circling every single station model. So here's six station models that are represented on here. But each one of these, in these different areas is giving us the weather conditions at the time of those that we see here. So in this case, it would be February 17th, 2001. And we have the time, 23Z. And you can see that it's just of the Northeast. So these are all the conditions of that time. Basically, those station models are shorthand way of including a lot of information in one small area kind of like a code in a way. So by looking at this, we could see that we have the main body of the station model, the shaft that comes out with these two pieces right here. So we have cloud cover pressure, the pressure, uh, predicted pressure that's gonna be happening, the trend, the barometric trend, previous weather, wind direction and speed, dew point, present weather, temperature. All this information is on our station model. Now granted, it can, can get com pretty confusing like we saw in the previous diagram, but it's still the best way we have of putting all this information in one spot. If we open up to page 13, the reference table, we can see that they actually give us the station model right here. 
and then what all the pieces mean on our station model. And he even some little tips and clues on what certain things mean, conversion factors, how to convert certain things over, and what's going on. So there's a huge amount of information. Oh, and then not to forget our present weather down here on the bottom. So there's a huge amount of information on here, and we're gonna go through and try to decipher this code. The first thing we're gonna look at is our cloud cover. Our cloud cover is gonna be represented on the main body of the station model, right here. And it's basically on the percent of it, the area shaded in is going to equal our percent cloud cover. So it's pretty easy, uh, and it's probably one of the easier things on our station model to look at. Here you can see what clear skies might look like. So you can see here the chef, the sorry, the main body of our station model is completely, completely open. Fair, just the one line through means we have an occasional passing cloud coming through, 25% cloudy. Notice we have one fourth or a quarter or 25% of our body shaded in and going through cloudy, mainly overcast, and then completely overcast where 100% is shaded in. The next one we could look at is wind speed. And we're doing these in no real particular order. Our wind speed is basically going to be connected to this shaft. And we could see that we have these two lines on the end of this one. Sometimes there's two, one, or none, or a lots of lines. However, we look at it, these pieces at the end here are going to be known as feathers. These feathers, whether it's a whole or half feather, are going to be associated with a particular amount of wind. So here we have a long one, a whole feather, a short one, which is a half feather, whole feather 10 knots, half feather 5 knots just in case you want to know, a knot is a little bit more than one mile per hour. We're gonna go into a little bit more with these, next slide coming up. So here, we can look at our wind speeds. So a weather station with nothing on it, all right, we'll have our shaft coming out, that with no feathers at the end, means no wind. One half one, five knots. Long one is 10 knots. Remember, whole feathers equals 10 knots. Half feather equals our five knots. And we can add these up, 15 or 10 plus 10 plus five equals 25. And we can continue to do this if we had another one. three whole ones, this would be 30. And so it'd be 10, 10, and 10. It's pretty easy to work through, it takes a little practice, but it's not too bad. Probably one of the easier things on here. Actually going back, we could also do our wind direction. Sorry about that. Our wind direction is where the wind is coming from. So here, this is pointing, and we're assuming that that's north. So this would be a northeast wind. Remember, winds are named from where they come from. So if it's up here, northeast. We could do another one. That would be a south wind. Okay, so the wind it, it points to where the wind is coming from. where the wind is coming from. Visibility, the visibility section right here. Okay, this is our visibility in miles. You can see it's the same right here. And we can basically, on how far we can see into our atmosphere, is gonna be our visibility. So you see conditions of high visibility, we can see pretty far. And conditions of low visibility, we can't see very far at all. This could be due to fog, smog, or any other things in the atmosphere that contribute to a lower transparency. 
And here we're gonna go into barometric pressure. We're actually gonna stop here and uh, because barometric pressure coming up takes a little bit of work and a little bit of explaining to do. But so far, just to recap, we have looked at our cloud cover. We have looked at our wind direction, our wind speed, and our visibility. So we've looked at these four different variables right here. And when we come up, we're gonna be looking at our barometric pressure and barometric trend next. A little bit more difficult, so stay tuned for the next screencast. Have a good one.